Okay, so this is investigation 13, and that's related to chapter 13. Chapter 13 is about equilibrium, but mainly in equilibrium is Le Chatelier's principle. You have an equilibrium, it has the reactant to the left side, the product to the right side, and then if you add more of the reactant, the equilibrium will shift to the right to minimize the concentration of the reactant added. Or if you add to the right side product, more product, the equilibrium will shift to the left to minimize the concentration of the product that you have added, okay? Here, in your investigation, it says there are six trays. Now, we will exclude one, and we'll use only tray one, two, three, four, and five. We will start with tray one. Tray one, which has the bromothymol blue. Now, the bromothymol blue is an indicator, acid base indicator, similar to the phenolphthalein that you have used previously. That goes from colorless to pink, right? Colorless in acidic medium, pink in basic medium. Now, the bromothymol blue it goes from yellow, green, and then blue. It doesn't go colorless. So, yellow in acidic medium yellow greenish in neutral medium and blue in, in basic medium you will have three solutions one acidic one basic and one neutral okay okay so take 25 milliliter water and one milliliter the bromothymol blue Roughly, all our reactions, we are studying the qualitative aspect of it and not the quantitative aspect of it. So which means that the amounts will not matter much, okay? But it's better to take the recommended quantities, okay? So I'll just... So basically what I'm doing here, I'm just diluting the solution of, the aqueous solution of the indicator. I have three different solutions. I will use three different tubes. So I have one, two, Now, indicator, it's a molecule that can exist under two forms, protonated and deprotonated. Now, protonated, it means it has an, an hydrogen attached to it, and this hydrogen can be detached to it, or if we put a base. If you put an acid, we will add a hydrogen to it. So we have the indicator, in acidic medium, it has a hydrogen, right? So that's gonna appear as yellow. In basic medium, it doesn't have a hydrogen, it's gonna appear as blue. Now, based on the color you see in here, it means that this is in basic medium. Now, if I add an acid to it, So I'm moving from the uh, deprotonated version of the indicator to the protonated version of the indicator. And therefore, I'm changing the color. Now if I add base and the color doesn't change, it means that my solution is already base. So you see that the color will not change. Now if I add a neutral solution, which is the sodium chloride, so you will see that the color is fading, not because anything is happening, just because you are diluting the solution. Now adding H+, so if you look at the equilibrium, you have 
H I N, so imagine the I N is the conjugate base, that's going to give you H plus plus I N minus. Now when you add H C L, you are adding H plus. The H plus is to the right. So it's going to shift the equilibrium toward the left. The left is H I N, which is yellow. Now when you are adding an AOH, the NaOH is taking the H plus because OH minus plus H plus is going to give you water. So if you remove this component from the right, the equilibrium will shift toward the direction of making more of this component that's missing. Okay, okay for tray 2, so you will take 20 milliliter of 0.1 molar potassium thiocyanate. And then you will add to it five drops of iron nitrate, 0 0.2. So one, two, three, four, five. You see the difference? Now according to the equilibrium, when you add potassium thiocyanate, so you're adding thiocyanate, okay? The SCN minus ion, plus the K plus, which is the spectator ion. Then you add iron nitrate. The nitrate is spectator ion. Iron three plus will react with the, with the, cyan, with the uh, thiocyanate to give a complex ion, Fe, SCN, Two plus, which has a dark color like this one. Now, in small tubes, you will see we have potassium nitrate solution, we have iron chloride, we have sodium phosphate, and we have potassium thiocyanate. So, I'll start by adding sodium phosphate. Now sodium phosphate, sodium is a spectator ion. Phosphate, looking at the equilibrium, it will react with what? It will react with the iron. Now it means it will remove the iron from the equilibrium. It means that the equilibrium has to shift toward the left side, which is less colored than the one I have right now. Because this dark brown color, it's coming from the complex ion, Fe thiocyanate, right? When you remove the Fe3+, the equilibrium will shift toward making more of Fe3+, which means consuming the Fe SCN2+, and the color has to disappear. Now, if I add, Potassium thiocyanate. What's going to happen? What do you expect to happen? What's going to happen to the color? It be darker. Should get darker. Yeah. Now we will see if it's going to get darker. It is already too dark, so you might not notice it, but Somehow, it is darker. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, as long as the major species, it remains the complex ion, so the color will not change, right? Or it will change, but to, an, to a point that you cannot see. It. So what I'm going to do actually, to make it visible, I'm going to vanish the color by adding phosphate, Okay, then try to recover the color by adding iron to shift the equilibrium to the, to the right. So I will first take the equilibrium to the left and I want to take it to the right now. 
Now adding iron will take the equilibrium to the right again. Will I be able to recover the color? Let's see. Take the equilibrium again to the right. What's gonna happen when I add potassium nitrate? Look at the equilibrium and tell me. Potassium nitrate. Nothing, because these two ions are spectator ions, right? It's gotten just getting diluted, that's why. Spectator ions. Okay, tray three will take 20 milliliter of, or 20 to 25 milliliter of copper sulfate solution. You will put it in two tubes because you have two different reagents. You have the HCl and the ammonia. Okay, so this is the equilibrium, guys. Look carefully at the equilibrium. Now, the blue color, light blue, this is the color of the copper tube, copper tube. And I don't know now what's the color of the complex ion copper ammonia. So that's why if I add ammonia to it, I should notice the change in the color, which is going to be blue. Because I'm shifting the equilibrium toward making more of the complex ion, or making the complex ion that has blue color. Now this blue color, I can make it disappear again, so I'll make another one. Okay, if I take HCl now, this adding HCl will consume NH3 because NH3 is base, NHCl is acid, it will react together as a base reaction and it will consume the NH3 and therefore moving the equilibrium to the to the left and I should see the color, the blue color again, the light color. So I'll add more HCl. See I can regenerate the light blue color again. Because I'm shifting my reaction toward the left, toward making more of copper. Okay. This is the color of CO2 plus. This is the color of the complex ion, copper ammonia. Okay, tray four, you will take around 20 milliliter of water. You will dissolve in it copper chloride. Now copper, copper chloride will dissolve in water and it will form a complex ion which is copper hexahydrate, okay? The Cu H2O six times O2 plus. Now this has a light blue color as you can see here. Now copper can also make a complex ion with Cl, with chloride that has the green color. Now, if I take some of this and I add Cl minus to it using HCl, I should expect that the color will move from light blue to the green. Right? Now, if I repeat this, by making the green, and I will see if I can shift it back to, to blue. So to shift it back to blue, so this is green, right? To shift it back to blue, I need to remove the Cl minus from around the copper and add water. So that's why I will simply add water to it. There you go. It's more diluted blue, but you can see clearly that the yellow color or the green color is a.
plus tray, tray 5, you will take 25 milliliter off. Absolute ethanol or 95% ethanol. So 95% ethanol, 5% water. You will take some of the co uh, cobalt chloride. You dissolve in, actually in your procedure it says two grams. So roughly I will take two grams. Now, if you look at the color of the cobalt, the cobalt solid, it looks like this purple. Now, when you dissolve it in ethanol, it's blue. This is because cobalt and ethanol, it will form with the water that exists in ethanol to form a complex ion, cobalt hexahydrate. Okay? Now, cobalt with the chloride again, it forms another complex ion that has blue color. So if I take some of this that I formed and I add to it NaCl, the NaCl will the Cl minus from NaCl will replace water around the cobalt and it will make a new complex ion that has a blue color. Of course, NaCl and ethanol will not dissolve easily so I'll add some water just to make it easier okay very good so NaCl is not going to dissolve in ethanol okay some of it so anyway you can see that adding some of the water will turn the complex ion to new one and that has pink color now if I take again another one and if I add to it Acetone. Now acetone, it's not in the equilibrium, but acetone will remove water from the solution because water, it's more soluble in acetone than in ethanol. As you can see, water, it exists to the right, which means to the product side. If I add acetone and it will remove the water, that's going to make it blue again, see? If I make the pink complex, look at the heat. The heat is part of your equilibrium and it exists to the left side. So if I add heat, the equilibrium should shift to the right. So that blue has to remain blue. So I will put it in here and you will see that nothing will happen. However, if I remove heat by putting it in the ice, I should expect to see the blue color to turn into pink. So I'll leave this one here. 